Welcome back to the channel and today's video is going to be something very different from what I usually do. In this video I'm going to be practicing how to make molds for an upcoming project that I have in the works. And I have decided to test everything on Legos. Using this cheap container and this little piece of paper from the silicone box, I will use this as the basis for the mold. We got our part A and our part B. I'm really hoping I can see these little things again after I'm done casting because you really can't find these anymore. It's been six years since they made this and eight years since they made this. Before working with any kind of chemicals, always make sure to have some kind of lung protection due to the fact that if you do this sort of work, you are most likely to get your lungs damaged and may receive cancer of some sort. Anywho, back to the video. Alright, so I've given it a good couple minutes to dry and of course I don't know if it's perfectly ready and this could end up being a failure but that's what all these experiences are about. Alright. It is the next day and I wish I could say I improved on my mold making skills but right around here something was screwed up and this is the results of this one. However this one came out alright due to the fact that the model here is actually smaller than the model here and I'd actually like to surprise you with a decent resin cast if I can. This one I know will turn out alright. This one is a 50-50. Even though I tried my very best at casting in this little mold that I made, this was a failed mold making experience, if I'm being honest. First of all, the mold itself wasn't properly made. I cut it in three ways, which would make a very bad cast. And I had poor uh, plastic that I still don't know why it failed, if I'm being honest. Alright, so right around here is when I actually started to get better at casting. This is one of the only early attempts of making a Snow Trooper Lego helmet that didn't really fail badly. And uh, if you can see, I'm really trying to get it out with just my one hand and holding the camera. And right there, uh, I was very surprised that it wasn't that bad when I took it out of the mold. And here I am pulling it out and showing it off. And personally, I am very glad that it wasn't a total fail. Alright, so these are the two molds I have ready. Now, I've had more success with this little mold than I had with this one. But, since I've learned a couple of things since the last time I've tested it, we're going to see what happens. Now, the reason I have this little bottle right here is because this is what I like to mix my part A and part B in. I don't have cups at the moment, so I just use bottles that we recycle, and that's how I do it. All right, so first I will add part A. I'm pouring just a good amount of it in the cup. Now, if you see, there is some right there. Now, part A has a distinct smell. Try to avoid smelling it. Because this stuff is chemicals and, well, it's obvious that it's not good for you. Then, I look at what I have, this amount. I try my best to pour in that amount as well. Now, before I start mixing, I like to heat up the molds. Once that's done, I can begin mixing. Now, something you should note. Even though you pour these things together, a chain reaction most likely will not occur unless you actually start mixing these things together, due to the fact that they have to be mixed thoroughly for any reaction to occur. The reaction that will occur is heat. So as soon as you start feeling heat, that's when you start pouring. Alright, now I have a couple seconds before this actually goes bad and dries up. So then I'll start pouring a bit in my mold that I've already heated up a bit. And this is something I just do on my own. After we've made our pour, we can now leave the molds for at least 20 to 45 minutes to dry, and by that I mean cure. Something to note when mold making and using this kind of plastic. I wear gloves because if you get resin on your hands, you cannot wash that off. I've tried, 
with water, hot water, and with soap, obviously, but my hands are always sticky after I'm done with that. So even if you think you're really good at this, I would suggest wearing vinyl gloves to avoid getting this stuff on your hands. Now, my one of my fingers had a little puncture, so some resin got on my finger. Better to have that on my finger than my whole hand, and that's an annoying experience you can avoid by wearing vinyl gloves. This isn't part of the tutorial, but I do have a question for any expert out there. I've been using black liquid plastic for a while, and every time I try, it always ends up a failure by not fully curing. And it also has a horrible amount of bubbles, and that is just a problem I have been trying to fix. This is the type of plastic I use normally, and uh, this was not cheap, but I still try. I bought this a while back due to the fact I thought it was a good substitute for anything I could work on. Unfortunately, all it proved was it's annoying on my hands and I don't know what's wrong with it. If we look at the model right here, we'll notice that there are missing parts to this mold. That is because of bubbles that occurred during this whole curing thing. Or the fact that when it was beginning to cure, all the plastic began to sink to the bottom. And that actually does make sense. However, there are there is evidence that bubbles created this problem. All right, and this is all of the testing I have done while learning casting. So one of the early things that I've done was use a black plastic, and that failed obviously. But I poured some white in the mold where I used some of the black plastic, and it was very brittle when I took it out. So this is what happened to that mold. And if I can get the darn thing to focus, which I can't, but still, it was a bad one. And this is where I started to get better at it, real better. It actually almost looked really good enough to, you know. But anyway, this is the real close one that I've actually almost proud of except for the fact of the bubbles that created this little gap right there and other than that this actually didn't come out too bad except it's not what I'm trying to do overall I've made I'd say at least seven of these attempts each one of those did not go that well they were close but not close enough and I did not think I was ever going to get close to casting at all. Until very recently I figured out a little trick that actually made this work. Alright, I'm lining this up as I go. But if we go to this one right here. We keep going. But then we go to this one. This is the closest I have gone to making a complete replica of a Lego. There is no large missing gap like this one. Nothing at the top like that. Even the inside. Pretty good. This was my latest one. And what I did different in this result, I heated up the plastic when I was heating up the molds. And I figured that wouldn't do much, but that actually did. So this is the closest I've actually gotten to making my own Lego. So if I take my minifigure right here, and I take the closest one I've got to a Lego. It's not too bad. And this is the original, obviously, but personally, I don't think it was too bad. Yes, I know that I cannot put actual details on these things, but the point of this is to learn how to make a mold and then cast something with it. And this is the closest one I've got. Not bad. I really like how my tests are going. They really need work, but honestly, I'm not doing too bad. I'm hoping that this new trick that I've learned helps in future casts, because all of this is actually just practice for another video I have in the works, currently. With all that being said, this was not a cheap learning experience, if I'm being honest. It took $40 worth of this material that makes the mold, and I am sorry to say those cost $90, both of those together. So in total, 
these little things right here cost a lot. But this is a learning experience and if anything went wrong, it was clearly my fault. Thank you all for watching this video. If you like it, please like, share, and subscribe because I really do appreciate what you guys do for the channel. And even though these are not perfect Legos, I hope to make better Legos someday. Even though this is actually not what I am trying to do. Anywho, have a good one.